Hey, how's it going? And today I'm going to be showing you how to create a normal map, bake out a normal map within Lightwave. And this can be used usually for creating game sized assets. So it allows you to project a surface onto a low poly model and thereby save computing power. So it's used for games, a lot of games, background images and games. The surface baking camera can also be used to bake out UV maps. And that's primarily a way to import textures into Unreal Engine. And I wanted to make a disclaimer that I am not an expert in normal maps, but I'm putting this out there just as a help mostly for beginners and anyone that's kind of wanting to get their feet wet with trying this. I was inspired to do this video because I found this tutorial on Lightwave on NewTek's site called the Surface Baking Camera. And I can't tell you how many times I went through this and I struggled every step of the way. The reason why is there's some, I think some key steps that are missing, they're kind of important and I kind of hit a wall and then I kind of made a couple mistakes too. So I'm gonna walk you through not exactly this tutorial, mostly the same process. We're gonna make an asset, we're gonna UV map it, and then we're gonna adjust some settings on the surface baking camera and then I'll show you some things that I learned to make the process doable. So you can definitely do it. It's just some steps involved. And once you get the workflow down, it goes fairly quick. So. so with that said, let's get going. Here we are in Modeler, and I'm going to start by making a quote-unquote high poly and low poly model. And so I'm just going to make a box, and it's actually probably not the, the most appropriate item to use, because if you're, if you're just modeling a box, you probably don't need a UV map. But I'm just doing this for illustration purposes only. So okay, we're making a box here, and it's just a basic box, and I'm going to hit Enter. And then I'm going to hit F3 to center it, and then I'm going to hit Control C and I'm gonna copy this to a second layer. So this will be layer two is really gonna be my low poly model and layer one is gonna be my quote unquote high poly model. And so how we'll be able to tell the difference between them is I'm just gonna come down here and just add a little extra geometry on here. So I'm gonna to go to polygons, I'll hit shift and I'm gonna click here and just select these four sides here on here. So, and there we go, just get this last one here. And there we go. Okay. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit B for the bevel tool and I'll come up here into the top and I'm just going to bevel out a little geometry here. Just something like that. Just something really simple. If you right click, you can bevel again. So I'm going to bevel again and just, just something a little more, a little bit more geometry than the other one. So we're calling this the high poly model. So I'll hit enter and space bar to deselect. So I've got a quote unquote high poly and then a low poly here. So what we're gonna do now, the one thing you need to do is hit Q on the keyboard and we're just gonna call this high poly. Oops, high poly and go okay. And then we'll go to the second layer and we're gonna call hit Q on the keyboard and we'll call this low poly. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a UV map for this low poly image. And that's real simple to do. You just come up here to UV. You're gonna go to make UV and we can just call it low poly UV. And then we'll set it on Atlas and we'll just go create. And it's create. And to see it, all you gotta do is come up here to the top and just go into UV texture and there's our. Now, one thing we can do is if you hit H, you can stretch this out a little bit more and hit T because you want to try to fill the space. I'm going to hit H again. I made it a little too big. And T again, just to try to fill that. There's a plugin you can use for this, but I'm just skipping that rough right now. This is all native within Lightwave. Okay, so I'll hit space bar to drop the tool and then we're done. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this, save object as, and we'll just call this normal test two. The other thing that we could do is if you hit F7, we can come here and if I double click, I can name layer one high poly again and go here, double click on this one and we can call this low poly and then go okay. And then we're basically done in modeler. So the point of this is oh, not save as just save, save. Okay, so the point of this is to create a high poly item on layer one and then a low poly on layer two with a UV map. And that's it. 
and then what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and send the object to layout. Now one of the mistakes I made in doing this is I actually separated these two images from each other. So it's kind of important just to leave them. You can just leave them positioned at the origin. You don't need to shift any of these because we're going to hide out one of these images as you'll go. The first thing that you do, there's a number of steps and it's not as daunting as it seems. But the first step is we're going to change our lighting. We're going to go into lighting and we're gonna change our distant light to an ambient light. We can leave that up there, but you, for right now, let's just bring it down to let's say 100%. And we might change the lighting a little bit later, but that's what we're gonna do for right now. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our scene editor, and this is a, a little tricky, but what we're gonna do is we wanna hide the high poly image from view. So we just click here, and hide it so all we see is the low poly but we don't want the low poly to be anything to be rendered out so we just turn it off so we can see the low poly but only the high poly is going to be rendered out and then it will be baked through the camera the normal map and all that will be baked onto the surface here you'll see how it goes here in a minute so the low poly we see it but don't render it and the high poly we render it but we don't see it okay and that takes care of that then what we'll do is we're going to go into properties I'm sorry, we need to select on the camera and we'll go to properties. And here what we want to do is we want the resolution of the camera to be the same as a UV map. So you can either do 5, 12 or 10, 24. So we're just going to do 10, 24 and go OK. And then what we'll do is we'll switch to the surface baking camera. When you do that, this box will pop up. If you close this box and you need it back, you just hit the P here and it pops back up. So for our mesh, we want the mesh to be to our low poly and the UV map to be on our low poly UV. Now, when you do that, all this stuff comes up here and this was just really confusing the heck out of me. So what we want to do is we have to adjust basically the, I don't know what you want to call it, cage around the low poly mesh, the low poly object. So I figured out the best way to do that is this way is this is the only setting that we need to adjust and we can leave it on smooth normals we click here we'll close i shouldn't have done that i'm sorry let me go back let me bring that box back i need this control i don't know why i closed that but what we will do is we will switch to camera view and then we will switch to vpr and this will allow us to see what the surface camera is seeing now this is where i was getting really mixed up because when one time i did this i moved the high poly object off to the side and it messed this up so that's why i say just leave the objects at the origin this is adjusting the basically the distance of the camera from the mesh from the low poly object and so when you pull this out what we want to be able to do is see the geometry on here so you got to keep pulling this out so you see it's white here it shouldn't be white so we just have to keep pulling it out until we see everything we're supposed to see and you'll see when we get there see i don't know if you notice that but you notice how it was it had been white so that tells us that we're past the point where we need to be so I'm going to see these white boxes. This actually means the camera is too close to the mesh and it's actually cutting into it. Now, what will happen if you see that, if I can find my object is you'll see something like this. If you see this color, that means essentially that the it's not being recorded. That's not the color you want to see. You don't want to see this color. That means you're it's not really recording any UV information to the surface. There's a website here. I thought I had it here somewhere. Let me see is this one there's some tutorials online this carlo limos has one and this is what we're really creating is a tangent space normal map and see if you come down here and you see that that's the color we're talking about this is a two channel tangent space normal map that's a lot to say that means you're missing the information basically we're not doing a two channel we're doing all the channels if you see this green color that means your camera's too close to the object essentially i didn't realize it took me the longest time to figure that piece of it out back to this so we still see the white here and what we want to see is just i keep pulling out and right there you can see it's no longer white so now you should be able to see the geometry as if it were just in a regular textured view and if you see the white and that's at about 203 millimeters out so right there this would be green if i rendered this out right now and so you just have to pull back, keep pulling back until you can see the entire geometry and the surface as if it were texture shaded, I guess. We're far out enough now. Okay, once that's done, now we need to just go into our render properties and we'll come here to render properties. And this always really confused me for some reason. In the tutorial, they create a custom buffer, but we're not gonna do that. We're just interested in baking out the normal map. But this always really confused me how to render out. But you go buffers and you're gonna turn this off, turn that off, and we'll turn that on. Then we go to output and then we're going to turn that on and then if you click on it 
you can go turn off this and you can store it anywhere you want on your desktop and that's where I'm going to store it is just on the desktop and so we should be good to render out our normal map I'll close this minimize this and then we simply go render frame it sometimes takes a little bit to render out it only take a few seconds once you get the workflow down this workflow down it actually goes pretty pretty fast you can also adjust your surfaces if you want. Uh, that's one thing I forgot to mention. Let me close this out for a second. Let me come into the surface editor and select both of these surfaces and we should turn off the specular. We don't want the specular. The other thing you can do rather than having an ambient light is you can turn up the luminosity if you wanna to try to light the surfaces that way. But I'm just using the ambient light. There's more than one way to approach this. So let me close that off. Okay, so let me re-render that. And like I said, it just takes a minute. And it's because it's 1024, if it was, we set the camera resolution to 512, 512, this would have burned, rendered out faster. Okay, once that's done, we simply go to continue. And then we go to buffer. And this is where I always get confused. But whatever you check over here on the render properties, they'll render out over here on the buffers. And that's our camera tangent. And as you can see, there's our normal maps right there with our geometry. And like I said, this isn't the ideal form to use. You wouldn't even probably need a normal map for something like this. You could just set the surfaces for whatever it was you wanted, but I'm just using this, like I said, for illustrative purposes only. So now we're just gonna go file and we're gonna go to PNG and we'll just call this normal. I've done this a few times already and we go save. So then what we'll do is we're going to close this. Now we can go back into our properties to see the results of the normal map now applied to our low poly object. What I'm going to do is I'm going to first go into lights, light properties and switch the light back to a distant light because it's essentially reading the normals are telling the, the camera or the engine how, how that light is to be read, right? So you, we really want a distant light is what we want. And as you can see, you can see the geometry here shaded a little bit. And then what we'll do is we'll go into camera, we'll go into properties and we'll switch back to our perspective lens. We're just going back to default light wave right now. And then what we'll do is we'll go to custom and we'll put the screen back to 1920 by 1080. And then we'll go into the scene editor and we're just gonna reverse what we have. So right now you're seeing the high poly object displayed or rendering. So we click that off and it's gone. And then we click here and the low poly is there. That's our low poly mesh. Now I might actually shift into perspective here now so you can see this a little bit better and I'm just gonna reposition myself. And then what we'll do, the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the surface editor and we're gonna go into the low poly item and we'll click here and then we'll load in our normal map, which is load normal five, load normal five, right? And open. And then we'll make sure our color space is set to linear. And then we'll set our UV map here, UV map, low poly. And then we'll just hook normal up to normal and hopefully if everything's right you'll see our normal map applied and then of course this is all based on the you know the lighting that you're using and so the normal maps are explaining how that information is to be bounced off and so essentially what we've done is put a normal map over our low poly mesh and then given the appearance of additional geometry there so anyway i hope you found this helpful this ran a little bit longer than i thought it might i hope you found this helpful so take care have a great day and i will talk to you next time